Hey collectors, before we get started with this week's concert poster conversation, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content Go Collect has to offer. Welcome back to our concert poster video series. I'm Katie. This is Glenn Troche from Psychedelic Art Exchange, and today we're going to talk about cataloging for concert posters. So when you hear us say things like BG and FD, what does that mean? Where does that come from? We'll talk about that today. So kind of how did the catalog system come about? I know there's a bit of a story there. Um, well, the, the current cataloging system that was adopted by CGC was developed by Eric King. He put out a guide years ago before there even was a hobby. There wouldn't be a hobby if it weren't for Eric, um, you know, because he published this guide and it became the accepted, uh, you know, uh, uh, level ground for identifying these posters. There were actually there were two bodies of research. Jake Bercaster, who owns Psychedelic Solution in New York, developed his own cataloging system, which uh, which went to Wolfgang's vault. They they bought him out, and and his research went to them. And if you you know if you ever look at Wolfgang's you know, posters, they have a different way of identifying and describing them. But King's system is what CGC decided to use to identify the, you know, the posters in his guide. All right. So we can just start out from the beginning, kind of listing some of those off. So FD, that's family dog. Correct. So that, you want to talk about what the family dog is? Well, the, the family dog was a run of posters uh, that, that, that took place at the Avalon Ballroom mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And in 1966 through you know the 68 69 and then i mean then there was also you know the, the well the film war of course bg for bill graham um so when you see that it's going to be like fd or bg and then a number which corresponds to the order in which those concerts happened most of the time well, yes, yeah. So BG one being the first Bill Graham poster, and BG two eighty nine being the last in that in Eric King's guide. Um, he also uses the prefixes or the abbreviations OP to describe a poster. OP meaning original printing, and sometimes there can be more than one version of an original printing, according to Eric. There's OP two, which is a variant of an original printing. There's also RP, which is reprint. So that's. And there will be many yeah. of those a lot of the time as well. Yeah, and so far, CGC has decided to certify all posters within Eric King's Guide and within The Art of Rock, which is you know a book that was published in the late '80s and became you know the, this is also this is the the second jumping off point where the hobby started and because people had images in front of them they, they'd never seen before so cgc uses the ar number as a cataloging number okay. as well so but art of rock is aor and there's other types of posters that are on the smaller scale that are also represented or represented so there's going to be hb for handbill oh well, yeah ohb and -H -B. then there's some here's here's an original handbill that is ohb dash C, so the you know, so eight, that's this depending on how many right variants right of a certain handbill there are. And then later on, they kind of stopped with the handbills and started with postcards, so that's designated OPC. Correct. Perfect. Um, there's a number of other poster series that are graded by CGC and talked about as well. So there's NR. Well, the Neon Rose, which was a series of posters that was created by Victor Moscoso, who was one of the you know, most brilliant artists of the era. He had a deal with The Matrix, which was a small club in the marina where he could print off you know, posters for merchandise. And he, he, you know, I mean, they're beautiful, incredible posters and pretty easy to find. And, and he signs a lot of them, too. Yeah, so this is, this is from the NR series. Mm -hmm. uh, also, what, whatever else is in Eric King's guide, the Armadillo World Headquarters posters, and the Grandy the, Ballroom yeah. posters, um, which we'll get to in another episode. Um, well, so Grandy Ballroom is going to generally be designated by G slash G. 
Um, and then there's the Vulcan Gas Company, which is also in Eric King's book. Correct, which was cataloged by Dennis Hickey, who was responsible for that information. Who's you know all of this came from serious students of collecting this material. They were fans and collectors. They're you know people that were passionate about this. There was not money in this. You know this is just emerging as having value. These were the first historians. They were. You know, the, the reason these items are preserved is because people thought that they were worth saving. It's just, you know, uh, I mean, it's a little bit different in the case of the neon rose posters. They were created as merchandise, so a lot of them survived, but the artwork's sensational. It could hang yeah. anywhere. Yeah, yeah, this is a cl yeah. classic image. I mean, yeah, no, that pops up in, yeah, in just a lot like, of places in pop culture. Yes, that's a. One of the most famous posters for the Chambers Brothers at the Matrix, yes. So if people are just getting started with collecting and they want to learn more about all this, I know you always say that you need to have the Art of Rock. That is your well, Bible. You, always buy the, buy the book before you buy the poster. Eric's King Guide is also useful if you really want to you know, have a, a field guide for identifying the species when you're out in the, in the field. And um, I mean, there's a... There's a Half a dozen really important books. Um, I have the references to them on the Psychedelic Art Exchange website, and I'm sure you know Go Collect probably has resources that can be listed somewhere as well. So yeah, all the books are yeah, good place to start. Is there any other kind of nomenclature or any kinds of terms that you think collectors need to be aware of? Um, you know, it's not uh, not, not that that comes to mind. I mean, the, there's, uh, you know, the grading, we can talk about that. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's the other half of what CGC does is they grade pieces of paper. That's, that's what they're best at. They're comic book paper uh, graders. So that's what they've, they've brought us a way to differentiate between copies, which, you know, there was no neutral source before. Before CGC came into the game, you had individual dealers, uh, describing their own stuff. I still do it with material that I auction that is not currently being graded by CGC. Um, mm -hmm. It's necessary to have, I mean, look, it's, it's yes, it's arbitrary, it's, it's you know, it's human um, judgment, which is, you know, what makes it interesting. That's why there's still umpires in baseball, I don't know. Um, uh, you know, until you have a, a computer that can identify every single flaw we're stuck yeah, with humans. Yeah, I like the human element of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you know? well, yeah, uh, you know, yes, for, especially because it's, you know, flawed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you want this information in a place where you can just look at it and read it, check out our Concert Poster 101 guide. The link's right down here. And that's all we've got for you today. Please let us know in the comments what your favorite thing that you took away was. And thanks so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing to this Concert Poster Conversation with Glenn. Make sure to tune in every other Monday for new videos, and we'll see you soon.